Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Good. Well, thank you all for allowing me to be here, and I appreciate uh, y'all's hospitality that uh, y'all have shown us the last couple of days. And uh, it's a privilege to be with y'all this morning, and we're certainly grateful for it. And uh, it's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's always good to be in the house of the Lord. Um, well, I will. I guess I will start out by giving you just a little bit of history about me. Um, I do know Brother John um, McAnally, that is, fairly well. Um, I think sometimes, most of the time when we're not in public, he'll claim me. Um, but Brother John and, and uh, his family, we go back a very, very long time. Uh, his family and I went to Amity School, graduated from Amity, and uh, lived in Amity pretty much all my life until I was 17 and I left to go in the military and I spent 23 years in the Army and retired. And uh, so I haven't been there a long time or even in there in a long time, but, uh, but Brother John and his family are still um, I still regard them as some of the goodest, greatest people that I know and uh, have met. And uh, I appreciate everything that he done for me through the years growing up. And, and uh, it sounds like that, uh, that y'all have had the privilege of having him here for a while. Or, um, but uh, again, we thank you. My family thanks you. We're glad to be here today. And uh, can everybody hear me okay? I see some of you kind of leaning. Just, just give me a minute. I'll get wound up in just a minute, okay? So, uh, but uh, again, we appreciate y'all letting us come and be here today. And uh, may the Lord continue to bless this church and each of you and your families. And, uh, and especially with you, I, with child, I think you're about to have a baby. Uh, right here in August, the hottest part of the year. I'm an August baby, so uh, matter of fact, I think my birthday's next Saturday. So, um, but uh, anyways, uh, so that's just a very, very little introduction. We currently live up in Pocahontas, um, which is up in the very, very northeastern part of the state, uh, about 30 miles from the Missouri line and uh, close to Jonesboro, if you're familiar with that area. I had never been to Jonesboro, that area, until we moved up there. And uh, I had spent a lot of time on northwest Arkansas, but never a lot in northeastern Arkansas. But uh, a lot of good folks up there. And uh, so y'all, I ask and I covet your prayers just, just for the Lord to, to lead us and guide us. And uh, glad that each of you is here this morning. Amen. Amen. Would y'all all do me a favor this morning? If you're able, would you stand this morning? Now this is what I'd like you to do, if you're able to stand, I'd like you to look to your neighbor and tell them that you love them and you're glad that you're here this morning. There you go. Now look to your neighbors to your front and to your back and ask them if you can borrow $20. <laughs> Now let's pray. And Father, we thank you for this time together. And Lord, we just ask that you would just to be with us this morning for a few moments. And God, I pray that, uh, that your Holy Spirit would move in and amongst us freely through us this morning. And Lord, I just pray that if there's one here lost this morning that doesn't know you as Savior, I pray today would be the day of salvation. And God, we just thank you so much, most of all, for Jesus and for dying for us on the cross. We ask that you would continue to guide this church, to guide my family. Lord, to be with us, continue to watch over us. And Lord, we thank you and we love you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you very much. If you got your Bibles this morning, and I hope you do, I would like you to take your Bibles and come to the book of Jonah, chapter number 1. Jonah, chapter number 1. When you're there, say amen. amen. 
It's all right to say amen in church too, by the way. It's all right to, to laugh and have a little fun in church too. I believe the Lord has a sense of humor. How about y'all? He has to to deal with us, right? But God sure is good. He's been good to me. He's been good to my family. And, uh, you know, if, uh, if, if something was to happen to me today, I could never say that the Lord has not been good to me. He's been good to me. He's blessed me. And uh, He's given me everything that I've needed, most everything that I've wanted. And uh, I'm certainly grateful for that. And uh, if you've been a Christian for any time at all, you know that uh, the Christian life isn't always about being on the mountaintops. Amen? And uh, that's why the Lord is called the Lily of the Valley, because He is also at the lowest place in the valley also. So he, I'm glad that He is the God on the mountain, but I'm also glad that He is the Lily of the Valley. Amen? And uh, two of my favorite songs. But, uh, you know, we always go through things in our life. Some of you may be going through things in your life that maybe you and the Lord only know about. I don't know. And uh, I wouldn't want to know, but the Lord knows. Amen? And that's the most important thing. And, uh, you know, we know as, as, as Paul writes in the book of Romans, he says in Romans chapter number 8, he says, For all things work together for good. Amen? So whether... Something we believe to be good or something that we believe to be bad that, that has came into our life, the Lord can use something that's meant for bad for His good. Amen? And in Romans 8, 29, ultimately the things that the Lord does and the reasons that He does those things for us is to conform us to be more like the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? And um, how, how would we, how could we stand up and say that we should not go through the same things that our Lord went through? Amen. Amen. Did our Lord not suffer? Yes. Did our Lord not go through trials and tribulations? Did our Lord not, uh, uh, you know, suffer on the cross? Suffer when those were, were beating Him with the cat of nine tails or, or all of those other things? So the Lord suffered. He went through things just as you and I went through. Amen. Amen. And that's comforting for me to know this morning because I'm glad to know that He knows everything that you and I could go through. He's been there. He's done it. Amen? Amen. And uh, I don't know about y'all, but that's fairly comforting to me. Amen. And uh, so I want to preach to you for just a few moments this morning on the purpose of storms. Y'all okay with that? I've only got three points. Three points and then we'll go eat. Amen? I was preaching a revival uh, two weeks ago, and uh, I said, I've only got one point tonight. And they said, Hallelujah. <laughs> we'll be eating early. And I said, But the one point's going to take me three hours. So I promise these points won't take me three hours. You listen fast, and I'll preach fast. Amen. <clears throat> I'm glad I'm back down in LA. I don't need an interpreter down here or a translator. Y'all won't think I'm speaking in tongues, hopefully. Amen. Amen. Jonah chapter number 1. Let's talk about the purpose of storms this morning. Notice in Jonah chapter number 1. Notice verse number 1. And the Bible says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. Now I can relate to Jonah right here. Amen. God says, go north, and what do I do? I go south, amen? But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. You know that's what happens every time you try to free the presence of the Lord, is you always go down, amen? And so he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Now notice what happens. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Verse 5, And the mariners were afraid, and cried every man unto his God, and cast forth the wares that were in the ship of the sea to lighten of them. But Jonah... Notice where he's at again, was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise and call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. And they said one to his fellow, 
Come and let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. And then they said, uh, then, they, then said they unto them, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause the evil is upon us, and what is thine occupation, and whence comest thou, and what is thy country, and of that people uh, art thou? And he said unto them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. And then there were men exceedingly afraid, and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. And then, uh, then said they unto him, What shall we do with thee, that a sea may be calm unto us? For the sea wrought and was tempestuous. Now we know the rest of the story. They threw Jonah above, overboard. And uh, of course we know that he was swallowed by the big fish, as we see there. And uh, he was in the belly for three days and three nights. Now we know that's a picture of the resurrection. But I want you to notice what happens. And sometimes here is the first purpose that we, uh, sometimes the first purpose of storms. Number one is the storms of disobedience. Amen. And uh, we see here how Jonah had disobeyed God. So God had sent a storm to chasten Jonah. Now chastening isn't always a bad thing. Amen. Um, I don't know about y'all, but uh, I'm sure I'm probably the only one in here. But when I was younger, I used to get a whole lot of whoopings when I was a kid. Amen. Matter of fact, I would get so many whoopings that when I wouldn't get a whooping, and I got a whooping when I didn't need a whooping, my mama used to say, well, you probably missed one along the way, and I was just making up for that one that I missed somewhere anyhow. So, uh, but I, I, was, I was pretty used to getting whoopings. Amen. And, uh, and I had an old school grandma. And I had old school aunts and uncles. Y'all know them old school ones that used to make you go outside and get a switch off the tree yourself. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And uh, I don't know about y'all, but I used to sit out there and, you know, you always got to measure the switch. It's kind of like what, uh, pick your poison, right? Do I want a big one that you know is going to break when they hit you? Or do I want to get one of them little mimosa tree limbs, you know, that's real green and flimsy that you know that they can pack a punch with? So... And if it wasn't right, or the right kind of switch, you knew that they was going to go get it, and you knew they was going to pick the right one. Amen? And, uh, but uh, I, I got a lot of whoopings when I was a kid. And you know, most of the time, just to be honest with you, I deserved every one that I got. And, um, and it wasn't a bad thing. You say, why? Because they tried to keep me in line. Amen? They tried to keep me lined up, lined out. And uh, you know, God tries to do the same thing with us. It's just like with Jonah here. The Lord says to go to Nineveh, and what does he do? He goes to find a ship that's going in the exact opposite direction that the Lord's telling him to go. So what does the Lord do? The Lord sends a storm His way. Amen. Now I'm not telling you that every storm that comes in your life is because you've done something bad or you've done something wrong. Amen. And let me just go ahead and throw this out there for you. God's not really in the business of blowing up your water heater or something because you did something bad. Amen. Maybe just because it's 25 years old and they don't make them like they used to anymore. Maybe that's the reason it blew up. Amen. But, uh, you know, chastening isn't always a bad, thing, a, a bad thing. Sometimes God has to chasten us to get us right. Matter of fact, uh, the writer of Hebrews writes in Hebrews chapter number 12, if you remember, he says, My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Amen. And then he goes on in the very next verse, in verse number 8, he says, If thou receive no chastening, thou art a bastard, and you don't have a father. Amen? Listen, can I just throw this out there for you today? God's not a, bit, a deadbeat dad. And sometimes God has to chasten us to keep us on the right path. Amen? Amen. And uh, some of us a little more than others, let's be honest. And uh, So the first purpose of storms that we see here are for the storms of disobedience. The storms of disobedience. Now, I will say this today. I'm glad that I serve a God. Amen? I'm glad that 1 John 1, 9 is in the Bible. For if we confess our sins, for He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen? I'm glad that I serve a God today that if I'm willing to get right with our Lord and Savior, hey, I'm glad that His mercies are renewed every morning. Amen? I'm glad that there, there is no end to His mercy, to His goodness. Amen? 
I'm glad that's the God that we say today. Y'all okay? Now, I'm taking a little easy on you. I think that y'all might have heard some stories that I might wander the aisles a little bit. And uh, some of you, that might make you nervous. I don't know. So I'm trying to be real good and stay behind the pulpit as much as I can, okay? But uh, don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. All I'm doing is making sure nobody goes to sleep. Amen? Number two, let's look at Mark chapter number four this morning. Mark chapter number four. So the first purpose of storms we see are the storms of disobedience. Sometimes God has to send storms our way to get us lined up. Amen? Amen. Notice in Mark chapter number 4, a very familiar story this morning, but I want you to notice how many of y'all when you came in this morning to the sanctuary you just sat down in the pew? Three people? Amen. When you came into the sanctuary and you sat down, did you, did you, just, did you test your pew? Or did you just sit down on it? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Huh? You just sit down, right? Sometimes things have to be tested and tried. Amen? Amen? The old saying goes that a faith that is untested is a faith that's untrusted, right? Amen. So it's kind of like this pew. Most of y'all, y'all have known this pew. You've, you've felt this pew. You've sat on this pew a very long time, probably. Probably some of y'all's backsides have the same imprint on the same pew, probably where you've sit there for so many years. If I was guessing like most Baptists, Amen. And uh, that's why when you sit down in the pew, sometimes it feels real uncomfortable. It's because it's not molded to you. Amen? And, uh, but you come in, you sit down, and, and you don't think anything of it. You say, why? Because I've said, I've tested it, I've trusted it, I've, I've, I've tried this out. I know it's going to hold my weight whenever I sit down on it, so I don't even think about it. So whenever I come in, all I do is I just sit down. Now this one doesn't have any molding. Imagine that. <laughs> But if I bet if I was to go the further back, the further I went back, I bet there would be more molding in the pew. Amen? But a faith untested is a faith untrusted. Amen? Yeah. You all know the story here in Mark chapter number 4. Look at Mark chapter number 4 starting in verse number 35. And the Bible says, And the same day when the evening was come, and he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. Now, that should have been enough for them right there. Would you all agree? Listen, if the Lord says, listen, get in, we're going to go to the other side, would you not think that you can trust the Lord when He says, listen, get in, we're going over yonder, amen? That when the Lord says, get in, we're going over yonder, you can trust Him, amen? Just get down, get in, sit down, shut up, and trust that whatever happens, the Lord says, we're going over yonder, so what, we're going over yonder, amen? amen? But you know, the disciples were human. Just like us a lot of times. We know what the Lord says. We know what the Lord tells us. But sometimes, let's be honest, right? It's hard to have faith. It's hard to react. Sometimes it's hard to be obedient to the things that the Lord says. So he says this. He says, y'all get in. We're going to the other side. Verse 36, And when they had sent the multitude away, they took, uh, took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And notice what happens in verse 37. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he, speaking of the Lord, was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and sayest unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the whim ceased, and there was a great calm. Now watch what the Lord says. And He said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? And how is it that ye have no faith? 
And they feared exceedingly and said one to the other, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Do any of y'all go to the gym? Well, hallelujah. I can, uh, I can relate to y'all then. I told myself when I retired, I wasn't going to do anything else. I wasn't getting up early and running anymore. I wasn't going to do any of that stuff. And so far, I've, 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 I've kept my promise pretty well. Amen. And matter of fact, the only muscle that I've really worked out is this one Amen. since I've retired. But, you know, in order to grow muscles, what do you have to do? You've got to work them things out, right? Or at least that's what they tell me. You've got to pump iron, lift weights, whatever it is that you do to get your muscles to grow. In other words, you have to exercise those muscles in order for them to grow, right? You know, isn't it funny that the Lord says, hey, y'all get in, we're going to go to the other side. The Lord goes in the behind part of the ship and takes a nap, and then all of a sudden there arises a great storm, right? They didn't have a bilge pump on their boat, by the way, for you bass fishermen. They couldn't just... Turn on a switch and the water get out of the boat. And the Bible says that the, that the boat was full of water because of the wind and the storm and the waves were beating against the ship. And they became scared and they went and they awoke the master and he said, Master, care us not that we perish. And he wakes up and he says, What in the world is y'all's problem? Where is your faith? Didn't I tell you we were going to the other side? You say, why would the Lord allow that to happen? Why wouldn't the, the very Lord that has the power over the wind and over the waves and over the sea and all of those things, why would He allow that to happen? Because maybe He knew that His time was short and that soon they was going to be on their own and that they had to practice the faith that he had been preaching to them all along. Amen. You know, sometimes God allows things to come into our lives, not necessarily because we're disobedient, but because he's simply trying to grow our faith. Amen? Amen. I used to tell people sometimes God has to put us flat of our back sometimes to where the only way we can look is up. Amen? Amen? Sometimes God allows things to come into our life and take it to such an extreme to where it is completely out of our control. You know, that's when God does His best work. I had a, a lady in my last church, stage 4 cancer. Doctors had already told her to go home and basically die. Nothing else we can do for you. She got to the point to where she couldn't even get out of bed. She couldn't dress herself. She couldn't feed herself. She couldn't go to the bathroom for herself. She couldn't do anything. One day she went to the doctor. The doctor said, pretty much just count your days. Go home and die. They began to pray. She never lost her faith. She knew that the Lord, whatever the Lord's will would be done in her life, she trusted and she had faith. Now listen to me, I still believe that God's the God of miracles, amen? amen. I'm glad that we serve a miracle working God, aren't y'all? Amen. The Lord healed her miraculously. She said she felt it. A hot rush just come over her body and she knew instantly that she had been healed. Now I'm not talking about some crazy Pentecostal type stuff, that's not what I'm talking about. I didn't say I put my hands on her and healed her, amen? amen. I said the Lord healed her. The Lord healed her body. She's still here today. Amen? Amen? You say, why? Because the Lord put her in a position to where she had no other place but to trust in the Lord. Sometimes the Lord will put us there. Amen? Amen? Why? To increase our faith. A faith that's never been tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. Y'all with me? Y'all okay? I'm not scaring anybody too much yet, am I? <laughs> One of these days we'll clap in church, amen? No, I'm just kidding. 
Y'all all right? <laughs> number three, come to 2 Corinthians chapter number one, if you would. 2 Corinthians chapter number one. So not only is there storms of disobedience, but there's also storms to build our faith. Well, I've still got 25 minutes. I see y'all have a clock on the back wall too. Y'all must have you must have had a long-winded preacher also. I come in one Sunday morning at my last church that I pastored. And uh, there were seven clocks along the back wall, all this big around. No. <laughs> I got the point, no. I preached at the church uh, here two weeks ago at the revival, and they didn't even have a clock on the wall. I said, no, that's, that's crazy. A Baptist church, and you don't have a clock on the back wall. 2 Corinthians chapter number 1, I want to show you one that's far often dismissed. Amen? This might be the hardest to understand of why God allows storms to come in our life. Amen? Now stay with me, and I'm going to show you several points through here. But did you know that sometimes it's not about you? That's hard to imagine, isn't it? Sometimes I have to take a step back and remember that the world doesn't revolve around Brother Ben Derrick. Sometimes it's about others. Can you believe that? Y'all heard the, the, uh, that old saying about what is the, the recipe for, for joy? Joy, right? Jesus first, others next, yourself last. Sometimes God allows us to go through things, listen to me, for the benefit of someone else. 2 Corinthians chapter number 1. Follow with me if you will. I'll just start in verse number 1. Notice the Bible says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in Achaia, grace be to you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. Thank God He is. Isn't that right? Verse 4, watch. Paul says, who comforteth us in all of our tribulation. Why? Why would he comfort us in our tribulation? But notice what he goes on to say. That we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. You say, what in the world is he saying? I'll explain it in just a minute. Stay with me. Verse 5, for as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. Verse 6, and whether we be afflicted, notice what he says, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings, which we also suffer, whether we be comforted, notice what he says, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the suffering, so shall you also of the consolation. You say, what in the world is he talking about? I want you to look back up at verse number 4. Who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any troubles are comforted of God. <clears throat> How many of y'all would agree with me that experience is the best teacher? Amen. Right? Now, I'm sure I'm the only one in here that's very hard-headed. Amen? I'm sure that there's no one else in here that would be willing to say that about themselves, so I'm okay saying that I'm probably the only hard-headed one in here. I had to learn everything when I was growing up the hard way. Amen? Amen. I was hard-headed. And if you used to ask my wife, she'd probably still tell you that not a lot's changed through the years. Y'all know what I'm talking about? So I still tend to be hard-headed. Um, Y'all know what they say the leading cause of men every year is, right? Hard-headedness and stubbornness. Uh, I ain't going to the doctor, right? Uh, but uh, anyways, experience is always not only the best teacher, but experience is always the best minister also. Amen? You see, it's a lot easier to minister to others when you yourself have been through it yourself. Amen? Now, I'm going to be honest with you. 
I spoke about the lady that had cancer earlier. It's hard for me to minister to someone that is going through cancer or that has suffered that kind of suffering or has been through that. Amen? Why? Because thank God, and I'm going to be honest with you, I hope I don't never get it. I don't like it. I've saw too many of my family members and friends die suffering with it. I've saw what it's done. I saw it kill my dad and my stepdad and lots of my family members and lots of my friends. Listen, it's not a good thing. And I'm just going to be honest with you. If I never get it, I'll be okay with that. However, it's a lot harder for me to sit and, and, and minister to someone who has been through cancer than it is for someone who has been through it to be able to minister to someone who is going through it. That's why the Lord comforteth us in all of our tribulations so that we may comfort others while they're going through theirs. Amen? There's a story in the book of Acts, chapter number 16. Paul and Silas are in prison in Philippi. They've been beaten, they've been whipped, they've been mocked, they've been told to shut up, stop preaching Jesus, they've been told all of these things. They're locked in, locked in chains and all of these things. And, and y'all remember the Bible says that at midnight, amen, Paul and Silas, now this is how you know they might not have been Baptist, amen. Paul and Silas at midnight, they're in there singing and they're in there praising and they're in there shouting and they're in there having a good old time with the Lord. And man, they're listening and they're hearing it and what's going on. You say, why do you know that they're not Baptists? Because if I'd have been a bunch of Baptists in there, we'd have just been in there been griping and causing a stir and a ruckus. I'm in here wrongfully. Don't you know who I am? I'm a Roman citizen. I'm here un unlawfully. You haven't even given me a trial. Don't you know who I am? Listen, why am I I going through this, Lord? What did I do? That's what we'd have done, right? But here's old Paul and them. They're just in there shouting and they're in there clapping and they're in there singing and having a good old church service with the Lord. You say, how in the world are they able to do that, especially when they've been in prison wrongly? If you remember the rest of the story. Y'all remember the story. The earthquake comes. The gates bust wide open. Everybody else is. We're out of here, right? Now that'd have been me. I'm out of here. I'm bad to see. I've done been. Whew. The Philippian jailer gets nervous. He knows what his punishment would be for allowing inmates to escape. He certain that he was himself faced death. So he's like, I, I know what's coming. I might as well end it now. And Paul says, hold up. <laughs> we still here. We ain't went nowhere. Everybody else has already escaped. But hey, we're still here. You say, why in the world? When Paul is locked in a jail cell in Philippi, when he has, has wrote 13 books of the New Testament, when he has been on these missionary journeys, when he's started all of these churches, when he is doing what the Lord has called him to do, but yet here he is, he's locked up inside of a prison, wrongfully been beaten to within an inch of his life, and here they are, they're in there singing, and they're in there shouting, and they're in there praying to midnight, and hey, here comes an earthquake and the gates bust wide open and then here's the Philippian jailer he's getting ready to even take his own life and Paul says hold on we're still here do thyself no harm you said what happened Acts 16 30 the Philippian jailer says sirs what must I do to be saved And I'm here to tell you this morning that Paul didn't say to go get baptized. Amen. I'm here to tell you that Paul didn't say, well, you got to be real good. Paul didn't say you got to give enough money. Paul didn't say, hey, you got to go to a certain church or join a certain denomination. Hey, I'm glad that Amen. Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved Amen. and thy family 
It doesn't mean that his family will be saved. It just means if they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah, I'm glad it's not salvation for just one person. I'm glad it's salvation for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved this morning. And hey, this is how we know that Paul might have been Baptist because he takes them straightway and baptizes them. And in the next place they show up is in the fellowship hall. Amen. <laughs> They're eating. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Come over a few chapters later to Acts chapter number 27, 28. You don't have to turn there. I'll tell you the story. You remember, here's Paul. He's already making his way to Rome. He tells... He's in port and he tells the, 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 the captain of the ship, he says, listen, let's don't go out of port. Let's wait until this thing goes past. This isn't a good time to sail and all of these different things. And the captain says, sit down, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm the captain of this ship. We're going to do it how I want it. So they take out on a sail. And the Bible says there in Acts chapter number 27 that a Euroclide and what we would know as a hurricane or a tsunami or something along those lines all of a sudden came out of nowhere. And man, they started chunking things out of the ship and they started praying to God and they started jumping ship saying all hope has been lost. They hadn't seen the sun or the stars and the wind and the wave and, and the storm beat down on them for weeks at a time and they was ready to give up and they was ready to have no hope and then all of a sudden Paul stands up because he's got faith in the Lord. Amen. And he says trust in God. He's going to get us through this. You say, what happens? The ship still crashed. You say, what happened? They crashed on the island, a little island called Melita. And y'all know the rest of the story. Paul's there and, and, and they are all floating up on the island there and, and the island's there with all of the natives there. And y'all remember the story about the viper that came out of the fire and bit Paul on the hand and Paul shook him off and nothing happened to him. And they said, oh, you must be God. And Paul said, I'm not God. Amen. But let me tell you about the one who is God. Amen. And they said, who is this God that you claim, Paul? Hey, and you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that the whole island was saved. You say, why? Because God used that storm to get Paul where he needed him. And because of him going through that storm, a whole island was saved. Amen who comforteth us in all of our tribulations so that we may be able to comfort others. Sometimes God allows storms to come in our lives not because of your benefit, but because of someone else's benefit. Amen? Amen. Would you stand with me this morning? I'm done. Ten minutes early. If I'd have finished 10 minutes early in my last church, they'd have gave me a raise. <laughs> I don't know what you're going through today, brothers or sisters. But God does. Amen. We don't know why God does the things that He does, but can I just say this this morning is that you can trust Him. You can count on Him. He's always right on time. I promise you. It may not be when you want Him to be. And he may not always be when we like him to be. But I promise you that God will always be there right exactly when he knows he needs to be. Amen. That's the God that we serve this morning. Whatever you're going through this morning, maybe some of you has been suffering, maybe some of you has been going through storms that maybe only you know about. Maybe some of you have been through storms. Maybe some of you have questioned it. Lord, what in the world's going on here? I'm trying to do right. I'm trying to do what's best. You know what? Maybe the Lord is allowing you to go something so that you can comfort someone else. Maybe the Lord is bringing storms of, of chastisement, of disobedience. I'm not saying that that's not always the case. Sometimes it is, certainly. But maybe the Lord's saying, hey, listen, why don't you just trust me? Why don't you just give up what it is that you think and what you're trusting in and why don't you just give that to me and trust me and watch what I can do with it. Amen? Amen. Whatever it is, the Lord knows. He knows. Amen? And just trust.
For we know that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. Whatever it is that's happening in our lives, God's working it out to ultimately conform us to be more like His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen? You know, and if it took a little bit of suffering and storms to be more like Jesus, I don't know about y'all, but I'd take it every day of the week. You see, Paul learned that. He learned that lesson. He said, in my weakness is when I'm strongest. Lord, take this thorn from me. Lord, please, three times, thrice. He cried unto the Lord to remove it. And the Lord said, no, nah, my grace is sufficient for thee. What are you talking about, Lord? Well, I thought if I'd prayed, everything would just happen the way I thought it would. No, the Lord knew what he needed. You know what Paul knew? He knew that his strength would not come in his own. And the Lord gave him that thorn so that he would have to trust in him, not in himself. Paul learned that lesson in my weakness. When I'm weak, he's strong. John said, I must decrease so that he must increase. Whatever it is in your life, I don't know what it is today, but the Lord does. Amen. Maybe you just need someone to pray for you. Maybe you just need to pray. I don't know how y'all do it here. I don't know how y'all generally give altar calls. But the Lord knows. Amen. As they sing.